No, I, I think, you know, voting is, is huge. You know, I voted early with Lovely and um, my oldest son, Jacob. My uh, second oldest son, Dylan, he's actually going to be doing a, a mail-in ballot. Um, he's 19. Uh, Jacob is just turned 21 this year, but he's not his first time voting. He voted last year for the first time. Um, was it last year? No, I think it was two years ago he voted, and it was for the governor of Georgia. So um, getting, getting them to vote early, I didn't, I didn't vote that early when I was their age. You know, I was far from being aware of politics enough to where I was actually wanting to be a part of the, I guess, the community to vote and things like that. You know, I was still... I was having kids and just trying to survive at that time. So, you know, real life was hitting me hard and voting wasn't part of part of that list, you know? So now having, you know, whether, you know, we went, we went in person, you know, so we, um, we skipped the first week of early voting because it's like anything else that's brand new. It's going to be jam packed. Right. So if you go right. early, you know, the first week, I should have anything. I suggest you kind of pull back, let, you know, the, the dust settled a little bit and then go back maybe the second or third week. So we went the second week, uh, which was last week. And um, it took us all of 20 minutes. That's what it took us from walking from the parking lot. Oh, wow. Waiting online to voting, actually, to walking back out. And we only waited 20 minutes. Um, that was all of inclusive of moving and everything and actually voting. So wasn't bad at all. Great experience. I personally don't like the mail-in ballot. I don't trust it. Oh gosh, yeah. I just what? don't. I don't trust the post office. I never did. Post office loses mail all the fucking time, dude. Just, I just don't. I just don't. Don't like it. Like I'm gonna see my shit in a dumpster somewhere. I don't get an official receipt saying that it's been counted. You know. No, it's but been, you, you can track it. You can track it. It's been, it's been received. But how about counted? You know. I, how do I know I, that? I, I'm sorry. That's again. It's right up there with people that don't believe in climate change. I have, That's not, because I believe in climate change. So I, I just don't have faith in the USPS. I, I do. I do. Because I, I get somebody, how, somebody else's mail in my mailbox all the damn time. Okay, I'll give you that, because we get that. <laughs> in our neighborhood too. But I, I, I have... Well, Plus, they've been cut. Their budget has been cut severely. They've been yeah, mailboxes taken that's, out that's, from the ground. That's be, that was because of George W. Right. Uh, so that, but that's my thing. If, if you if you have the stressed system, and then you want to impose at a heightened time and a short period of time to to garner all these pieces of mail, so there's an influx, and then separate it as such to go someplace else. I don't think they they're ready for that. Things can be You're missed. Right. Listen, we're humans. They're probably not ready for it. I, I agree, but not in that I type of mass. And I'm saying, I, I, I want to have, but I want to have, I want to have faith in the postal service because, and and integrity with the postal service because I feel, I feel that they understand that you know this is a major, major election year. This is a major election time and i hope that people that work at the post office have integrity to say we're going to take care of these i mean because that's how we vote in colorado majority of us mail-in voting and it works right. great you fill it out there's boxes all over the county you just drop them in uh, bing bada boom and, and and you're right there, there's probably some freaks out there who will try and steal those oversized boxes or, or what have you. But I, I have to have faith. I, ha I really do that there are some idiots out there that, you know, no matter where you work, there are idiots that, I mean, I'm probably, when people talk about, oh my gosh, I hate my job because that idiot Tommy, that, that's, you know, I'm that idiot that, you know, so. Right. I, I mean, look at look at the statistics. We are way ahead in early voting than we were in 2016. So that tells you something that, that, that people that want to vote. And, I, and listen, I love the early vote. I don't get me wrong. Like on the process we have here, and then the, the weird thing is that the, this process is usually not the same everywhere. 
and the machinery is not, depending where you're at, if you're in, in, a, in a district that has not a lot of tax dollars, your machinery might be a little bit older. I live in a, in a very good neighborhood, so we had these great large tablets in these in this booth. Mm-hmm. And then you also you get your little card. You put your card in the system. In the, in the system, it, it records your your vote digitally. It also prints out on paper your 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 vote. And then you go into you go to the, another line. You actually put it yourself into this lock box. It's actually locked. You see the locks, and it's and it takes in your your paper vote, your paper ballot as well. Um, so you have both digital and paper to you know as as a backup, which is great. At the and then you get your little sticker and you walk out. Um, the process was seamless. It was more. Thank you for the volunteers that that do volunteer at at the polling places because that's huge. You know, there's a lot of headaches with that, and short period of time they had to learn how to use new systems and things like that. Um, but I think uh, next next go around, I may volunteer myself uh, just to be part of the process even deeper. You know, um, but you know. If you're a first-time voter, or or yeah, if you're a first-time voter, you're not sure yet. You know, campaigns are over two years old, sometimes even four years old. Right? We're only country on earth that have campaigns are freaking long. I think in England, they only campaign for 13 weeks or something like that. It's so, I think it's even less than that. But yeah, yeah. you're right. I mean, why? It was funny because the other night, my wife and I were um, just relaxing, watching some TV, and I just said, I am so tired of these political ads and then we we're watching some other channel that uh, what was it i think antenna tv that shows all the old rerun shows and yeah every other or every commercial was about an app a, a some kind of financial or and i'm going i'd rather watch these dumb app commercials than watch this really yeah over the top, uh, crappy political ads. And, but that's the thing though, is if you don't know who you're voting for by now, I I don't know. I don't know what to tell people because I I firmly believe that, you know, you have a sense, even though, um, you're, 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 your choices aren't really two candidates because if you look at every ballot in, in the United States, you have all these other people that made it uh, onto the ballot for one reason. Freaking Kanye made the ballot in Colorado. And I'm just like, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> I, I mean, and it goes back to your point. If you're a first time voter and you see Kanye and you're going, hey, I'm going to vote. Don't be an idiot. You well, there's, there's some there's some other people, senators, even governors. Who one governor I think of Maryland voted for Ronald Reagan. He voted in. He's the governor of Maryland. So he wasn't gonna vote for Donald Trump, but he said, I'm not gonna vote for Biden either. So yeah, he voted for, for that. Or who was it? Uh the guy who wrote the latest book on the White House with the big ass Warris mustache, forgot his name. Oh, um, um Bolton. Bolton, he didn't vote for Trump. He said he wrote in one of his friends or whatever. So my thing is, you know, yeah, you, that's your right to do so. It is, but it's loss, a waste it's a of loss a vote. is a waste. A loss of a vote. Yep. You know, um, and you know, I just want to track back to you talked about earlier with these political ads. You know, as I said, I, I kind of went on later into my political kind of interest later as I got older, but as a child and into my you know young adult years. I, re- I remember all these ads of just bashing each other to today. It's the same ads. And I think that's what these campaign managers are missing, that people don't want to hear that shit, right? I want to personally hear what does your candidate have or what's their plan and explain to me. So I don't want to have to wait to a debate to hear something or go to your freaking website, which I will anyway. But put your ad and saying exactly what is your plan and things you're doing. And if you're already in office, tell me and remind me, what have you done? Mm -hmm. That way, with this information I have, then I can make a better decision. Not based off saying some bullshit rhetoric because or or you chop up interviews of that other person to make it sound like some crazy, some craziness. Yeah, because they end up taking them out of context anyway. Absolutely. 
And if I didn't watch you, if I'm not aware and I see that, that's the, that's the only impression I'm going to have. So these campaign managers, and if one campaign wants to go that route, that's fine. The other campaign should really realize who their truly their audience is. I think they're missing it big time. I don't think they really understand who their audience is. And, and a lot of times these campaign managers only go for the older crowd because that's who really votes. And I get that. But as you can see this time around, when I went to go vote, it was it was like all over the place as far as the age group. You know, well, that's good. It really that's was really good. good. Yeah, like I said, my my son is twenty one. You know, I'm I'm going to be forty three. Lovely's in her thirties. You know, so then we had I seen older people. We let them skip us, of course. They let them go, you know, ahead of us. Um, but you've seen so many different age groups coming in to vote. I was like, this is fucking fantastic. No matter who they voted for, I just, I'm just glad they, they were there. I, I agree. And, you know, I heard a story recently where uh, a, a dad who is uh, more for one candidate than the other, and this was his daughter's first time voting, and instead of letting her make the decision, he told her who she should vote for, which is sad. This is yeah. the first time you're voting. This is the first time you're, you're, you're taking something that we, we take for granted, our election system, and you're unfortunately being told who to vote for. And, and that's, that's ridiculous. And Yeah, I think if anything, that the best thing was for that person – to introduce them with the information mm -hmm. and let them decide if they want to vote this go around or not. Exactly. If they don't feel that that informed yet to make a solid choice, then the next four years you'll be a little older, a little wiser, you can make a better decision. Because honestly, you know, my son, other son being 19, he doesn't follow politics at all. My oldest son, he's in it with us a lot. He actually, he watches a lot of our same co uh, content we watch. He sits with us in our living room to where we're actually talking. We just finished watching the 60 minute um interview that donald trump walked off on and pence came on looking like a zombie yeah. um but then biden was on and <laughs> biden was whispering to, to, to the camera but um it was you know he was there listening he has his he, you know he had his own opinion which was great and we, we you know we're conversing back and forth my other son he's he's not into it he's into his gaming he's very unaware so he does use us as a resource so it's it's really up to him at this point when he casts his ballot exactly you know to decide who, and then if he asks me, like, like Dad, who should I vote for? I'm gonna say honestly, it's up to you. And, you know, it's, it's it, it, I have my preference, but it's really up to you. Go ahead and they've got to learn how to. They have to learn how to do the research. They have to. They learn. have to. They have you, to. You know, one thing you were talking when you were talking about the political ads. Uh, one of my favorite shows, other than 60 Minutes, is on Sunday morning called Sunday Morning. They ran a, or they showed a political ad for the two gentlemen running for governor in Utah. And they did a political ad together saying, we're not here to bash each other. We both have our good points and we have our own views. It's up to you to choose who you're gonna vote for. And it was wonderful. It was right. a positive ad. There was one, I think it was the last actually, year. Actually, you know I, I did Michigan. see that. They showed that over here, actually. It was um, Huntsman was going against, right? Um, I don't remember that. Governor, and then there was another female candidate, I think, or something like that. Yeah, there was one, I, 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 I want to say somewhere in Michigan. It was, yeah. There were two, and they both played uh, musical instruments. Yeah, yeah. And they were going around public libraries doing their talks about why you should vote for them. and then they would do a little musical thing and it was wonderful i mean why why we need that i mean we we've got i was telling somebody today the uh 1918 spanish flu lasted for three years and the, they had no technology back then they all they had was somebody smart said wear a mask brilliant great good for them, which was probably uh, the closest thing to t technology. Right. This is 2020, going in 2021. I say we are no longer ahead 
trying to battle this pandemic. And I don't want this to last three years. I don't want this to last another month. And so this is where it's really important to vote. It's really important to put in leadership that's going to understand where our country needs to go. And so, again, it goes back to if somebody says, well, who should I vote for? You have to do the research. When it comes to science, you have to do the research. When it comes to writing a book, you have to do the research. And so I'm, I'm one of those people where as I've gotten older too, just like you, I've gotten more and more into trying to learn more politics, trying to learn about candidates, trying to learn more about government issues. So I'm, I'm excited and also nervous about this election all at the same time. And matter of fact, I, I, uh, I told a friend of mine on Monday that I was going to go off the political grid until you text me. And so here we are. You ruined it for me. So you mentioned you're nervous. You're nervous. So what are you nervous about exactly? Uh, the outcome, because I look at what happened in 2016, and everybody said Clinton's going to win. Clinton's going to win. Next thing you know, she's saying, "Congratulations, Trump, you're the president." But that's and because you know people. A lot of people understand that. We have something called electoral college. Exactly. And it is not about the popular vote, right? So it isn't. It isn't, right? So, if 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 in your particular state, someone gets most of the votes, right? Then that per that that person gets all the electoral votes. So if if it goes one way or the other, that person gets mm -hmm. it. Even though you does say, let's say it was forty nine to fifty percent. I think they should split the, the electoral college, meaning that if you get whatever percentage you get as far as voting, because at that essential point as a voter, my vote didn't count for anything. Exactly. And that's why the electoral college needs to go away. Right. So it's I think it's needs to be reformed. To get rid of it. I'm not sure about that because, you know, the, the coastal regions have the most population. They, then there's always been things saying that that can, that can kind of sway the, how the voting goes. But the Electoral College was designed for our forefathers. It was not designed for our, our, our current situation. And not not so today, but it, it held up well the only back then. It is because if Nebraska didn't have the population, but they had more electoral, electoral votes, it forced those candidates to go and, and listen to those, those constituents, those potential voters. You know, so it worked out that way. You know, because you don't want to be a, a part of the United States and it'd be a forgotten state or a state that's not even looked at. You know, think about how Iowa is so important or Vermont, you know, just for the beginning primary season, you know, not a major other city or state. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's relevant in some certain points. I do think it needs to be reformed. I don't think we're there yet for just a popular vote. I think for me, at least, I, I believe that maybe it should but be split. why? Why? I think it should be split. I think Why? if 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 we're someone going, wins thirty percent of the votes, college. if someone wins thirty percent of the votes, you should get thirty percent electoral college votes. So if there's seven votes, you get three. I get the four, whatever it comes out to be. I don't think those those constituent votes should be not counted. I think it should count for something. That's why the electoral college needs to go away. I, I don't think we can. We still have states who don't have a, a it, large population. You know what I'm saying? You go to Nebraska, South Dakota, they're gonna, always going to feel have, like have their votes don't count. Nebraska? Yeah. Have you been in Nebraska? Yeah. Nebraska, yeah. Yeah, I heard about it. But uh, I used to live there. <laughs> go big or red. It's a, it's a large state. Um, it's pretty square. But I think, I think the electoral college needs to go away, yes. And like I said, it needs to be performed somehow. Some way that's not going to hold happen. on. You can't. You can't have both. You can't have both. I said you it should be reformed. I said it's a way and reform. So it's either. But he's, one well, or I'm saying kind. reform. It has to be reformed somehow. It can't be. It can't stay the way it is today. No. It has to be reformed no. somehow. So, no. however that looks like. But again, that's what that's going to take an amendment 
that's going to take what three fourths of the of the country to agree upon to, to change well, the not, constitution. I don't know. If, I don't know in Georgia, but in Colorado, that was on the ballot. No, that wasn't on the ballot. Away. Yeah, that wasn't yeah. on our ballot because we're a Republican state. They ain't trying to get rid of that shit. Yeah, yeah. you know. I think in the South, it would be very hard to get rid of. Uh, I don't know. I Because uh, most, listen, I'm, most major cities are Democratic. Even Atlanta. Atlanta is definitely Democratic, you know, but the rest of the state, hell no. It's heavy Republican. Right. Right. So that's why Joe Biden's here today. Uh, Kamala came last week. It's a very important state because we have a lot of electoral votes here. Hold on. And they didn't come by the show? They didn't come by. They were kind of booked. And oh. I didn't I couldn't do any proper testing either. So next no next go around, I hope to get them on the show. But um All right. yeah. But um, you know, they come, they know it's an important state to come to. Um but the electoral votes also change based off the census as well. So based off their census population yeah, but look what happened look what the happened numbers do change every ten year. years. So we can lose, you can lose electoral votes and you can gain electoral votes based off the census. Yeah, but look what happened to the census this year. They shut it down earlier than it was supposed to. But, and that was by design. Of course they did. Yeah, by design. They, want, they wanted to. Nobody wants to. Listen, right now, America is beyond just a bump on the road right now. I think we kind of went up into a ditch. And we have some things we have to fix within our home right now. We've been ignoring. I'm gonna our say home so deeper. Long. I'm gonna say deeper in that ditch. I think we're in a, a big ass crater. Well, I've been like, um, what's his name? Tim Pool. You know what Tim Pool is? Not personally. He well, he's a he's a podcaster. He's also an activist. Um, he uh, he thinks it's gonna be a civil war, right? If I'm not mistaken, I, I think that's what he, I don't think so. No one's going to try to lose their home. You know, the average Joe is not really prepared to freaking fight. You know what I'm saying? We, we're so we're so cushed up. We're so cushy. You know, no, no doubt you have your militia in Michigan. We have a militia here, too, in Georgia. But maybe those folks are ready. But do I, do I think it may be some rioting happen, happening depending on who wins? I think so. But I don't think it's going to go a full blown civil war, you know, because honestly, with that to happen, you would already need some type of rhetoric or some other leader posing that threat. And you also need another kind of military or gathering of. No one has been kind of getting that ready. Hold on. Are you saying like a dictatorship? What happened? Are you saying like a dictatorship? Similar or just what happened to us in our original civil war? How do you mean? That's what we're going, but that's what we're going through right now, Johnny. We're going through a dictatorship right now. We're going through a person who firmly believes in white power. He believes in putting the military behind him when he had that July 4th parade where he showcased the military. We have that. It's already I think, I think, happening. I mean, I look at Kenosha. Look at Kenosha. There were people in there that had zero uh, uh, ability of being a law enforcement person. That's a militia. He's already done it. Can you tell, can you tell which side I'm on? <laughs> I think I can. I think I can. I think, honestly, at this point, I, I, I don't feel that. I think he's... Always misspeaking. I think he he doesn't do no no help for himself whatsoever. I think the people who surround himself are just a bunch of yes people. Um, he continue. He's probably fired more people in his cabinet than the past three four cabinets combined. You know, the, the, either either fired or ended up in prison. Correct. So, you know, no administration is clean. You know, whether you want to have someone who's prim and proper in the front, but doing some shady shit in the background. You know, you have that fucking Nixon, you know what I'm saying? So oh, you yeah. have that as well, where you have the presence of someone who could be presidential, but not really in the back. Right. So for me is right now what America is, what can you do for me lately? Even to the point to our allies are like, 
they're stepping away because our foreign policy is not consistent to the office of the presidency like it was in the past. So Democrats and Republicans would probably disagree on certain points, but overall, there was some consistency there with our foreign policy. Now they're so afraid that the changes will happen every four to eight years. How do we play America now? You know, as they're saying, Rome is falling and, and the rest of the world doesn't like us. But my thing is this, we never, we, we're so brand new. We're only, we're only 230 years old as a country, right? We're a fucking baby compared to Europe. Europe is a few thousand years. China's like, what, 9,000 years? We are just figuring shit out. And America is a huge ass concept. No other country in their right mind would say, give me a poor, give me a sick. We're going to take all of them. No matter what, what you, we, we got you. Just come in and put all these different cultures and beliefs underneath one roof. There's no other country like, like us in the world. Does he have, he have small pockets of countries, maybe like England, maybe more like London has a little, like more of a metro piece to that, but the rest of the country is not like that. Us as a country, we're like that. So it's not going to always fucking work out. On top of the fact that we continue to put these other, is it pronouns? They're pronouns in front of American. I'm considered Hispanic American. Why not just fucking American? Or well, African American. They're not from Africa. Why do you call them African American for? And don't get me wrong, I don't want to lose my heritage either, but I won't. Just call me fucking American. That's what I am. Well, you're fucking separating... I'll, I'm going to start calling you fucking American. Just call me fucking American. Not, not John. I'm, I'm going to South now, so it's America. Yeah. America. <laughs> America. You know, so it's, you, know, it's, you have to, that's, that's what bothers me. Some other people may like you because they may feel like you know, you're recognizing who I am. I recognize who the fuck I am. If someone has a question about my ancestry or my background, right. ask me a question. I have no problem telling you. You know, but once we get this stronghold on everyone's American and let's, let's be America, but at the same time, too, I just think people don't focus enough. I think I told you this before on their local politics. Mm-hmm. Depending what city or state you live in, you need to really focus. And that that will affect you more than their fucking presidency will. To be honest with you, that's a great point. Great, you point. know what I'm saying? So everyone's so hyped because the presidency is so big. I get it; deserves the attention. Who's going to be our representative of us to the world? But honestly, who who's your district leader? Who's your mm-hmm. mayor? Who's your senator or congressperson? Who's your governor? That affects your daily life. Where's your local? T- your money goes straight to those potholes in your city, in your streets, or maybe it doesn't. And if it doesn't, then you need to p- pick a bone with somebody. You know, so I think once you get your your behavioral, your 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 local behavioral pol- politics in and in, ingrained to yourself, then you can really have more invested into the national mm-hmm. politics scheme. But right now, I think I, I really care about what Georgia's going to do what jobs Georgia going to bring in, right? Because each state has its own thing. It's proven to us, the, 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 the president said to us, to, to, to the states, get your own PPE. So right. essentially you had additional 50 countries out of the rest of the world competing to get PPE. Yeah. yeah. Now, if there was another president, whether it was Republican or Democrat, I think that would have been the issue. I think someone that would really want to be presidential would have said, I got you guys. I'm going to make the deal. I'm gonna disperse it. Gotcha. Right. So yeah. I think I think that was his personal fuck up. But at the same time, too, he played his cards right because you could do that as a state. It's up to you. Run your shit. I, I want to go back to your your point about you know local government, and it is one of those things that we really don't think about. Mm-hmm. We do think too much on a on a national level. Yep. And you know, one of the things that, you know, every year when you're voting, you've got local people and you're like, who the fuck is this guy? Who the fuck yeah. is this lady? I don't know them. And, you know, luckily for me, my wife uh, actually works for county government and she's more in tune with the people on the ballot. And so I can go to her and go, well, are, are they an asshole? Are they a good person? And she'll give me, you know, her thoughts. And I still have to make that decision, bottom line. But 
it proves your point that we do need to look at local government. I mean, I look at, you know, Barack Obama. I mean, he started at the local level and ended up <laughs> raising, becoming president. Exactly. So that's, it, it's, I, I think that's something we do take for granted. We, we think too big instead of, you know, honing it down and, and looking at the, the small pieces and the small pieces do make or can make a lot of decisions at the local level that are going to impact you even possibly even more at the, the national level. So my thing is, this: do I really care who's in the office or do I care who's really in the Senate? I care more about who's in the Senate and the house. Exactly. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. The, the, the president make you veto some shit here and there, Mm -hmm. but most of really all the, all the laws or bills are passed are in the house and the Senate. Mm-hmm. All right, so who you're putting in locally <laughs> from your state is how important how they're going to vote or which way they're going to vote towards. And and that's what people, again, I had to develop this political bone. I had to learn all of this, you know, and it's not easy. It's annoying as fuck. It's boring as hell to read political yeah. books. You know, I have a few and I'm like, holy shit, but I get them anyway. I do read them. Do I watch the news? I watch all of the news stations. I don't just watch CNN. I watch Fox as well. I watch MSNBC. And I have to glean through that to see, okay, well, what information is, you know, like I said, we just watched 60 Minutes. You know, can I really get good information from this particular story? If it is, I got, I got to do more research. I have to filter even more to make sure this is accurate. And once I feel like I have that knowledge and that information, then that's when I hold it. And then from there, I add it to my repertoire. Right. So that, but it, it takes time and effort. That's a lot of fucking yep, work. Yep. And I, that's what I was going to say is it does take time and effort. And you have to really take the time and effort to, to be a, a good citizen. And some of the things that I keep hearing is, in schools, we don't talk about that anymore. We don't no. educate our kids anymore about citizenship and, you know, leadership. And when it comes to, you know, the political side, and we don't talk about community no more. Being good stewards no. of your community, exactly. you know, having the kids do volunteer work in the community, but they are cleaning it up. They are picking up fucking bottles and shit that the adults right. drop off on the wood work, you know, it's out their windows. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like. You know, so I think if, if people were to take more pride in their community, right, and understand, hey, I'm, I'm paying my taxes, I want to live here, I want this mm-hmm. place to be pristine. So if you're coming to visit or you're coming to pass through, don't drop your shit here. People should feel that and see it and not want to drop something, in, you know, off into the road or wherever else, right? So, but again, it comes down to us participating. And I'm telling you, it has to start at, at, at the micro level, it has to start locally. Like my, my mayor is named Rusty. <laughs> like that's some country ass fucking name. That's a great name though. It's great. It's, it's oh he, he was last year when there wasn't COVID. You know we we were at the uh, we were watching um on the lawn we have here a movie a movie on the lawn night and he was singing you know Star Spangled Banner. He wasn't the best singer, but he was singing it. And um, you know for. For our small city in Sandy Springs, we're, you know, we, we we used to be part of Atlanta until we broke off of Atlanta itself and became our own kind of concept. So that's your thing. And um, to me, he's he's okay. He does well, you know, as as a mayor. Uh, things get fixed. The, the roads are always on point. Um, so I can't complain, right? Um, neighborhoods are always clean. Can't complain. You know, things are great. Um, most part, I live in a friendly, very diverse neighborhood. So it feels fantastic. But again, I, I, I gave myself a vested interest to know that my mayor's name is Rusty. <laughs> you know, most people don't know that they actually have a mayor. They tend yeah. to go ahead and listen more to the big city that you're connected to or the near, nearby neighbor of. So if you live in the suburbs, if I lived in the suburbs, yeah, like my my mayor would not be Keisha Lance Bottoms of Atlanta. Right. It's going to be Rusty. Yeah. Right. And most people don't know that, but they attach themselves to that anyway, which makes no sense to me because you well, can't vote for them. When, when I was, um, I used to belong to a Toastmaster group in my local area. And one of our 
uh, city commissioners was a member and I, I really got to know him. I really, you know, liked him and I was able to, you know, hear his views, even if they weren't the same as mine, I got to hear them firsthand because I, I took the initiative to talk to him. And so I, I'm just like sitting here dumbfounded going, what you said is so brilliant. We do need to think so microcosm at the local level, because again, and we've seen the it, national level. It does. <laughs> and it, you, the, you know, the County commissioner today could be running for president. Yeah. That could be your future uh, governor 10, 15 yeah. years from now. Then yeah. from that governorship could lead to a presidential campaign, possibly right. the presidentship, right? So, you ha- like you have to get involved somehow, some way. You don't need mm-hmm. to be a true blue freaking pundit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But oh. you have to be aware of your of at least your neighborhood, who's your mayor, and what what is your district makeup of? Who is your you know your councilman? Things like that, and even your local senate, right? So you have a local capital, so you have your local senate. Yeah, who's in there? What bills are being passed? Like you know, again, like I said though, it is a lot. And locally, it's even harder to source information because the news really isn't doing, you know, great interviews with these folks or interviews at all, unless it's a major bill they really want to, you know, expose. Uh, on the day to day, you don't see real true interviews happening. You really have to sort things out, look on websites, call folks up. Like, it's a lot of work, you know? And that's what I'm hoping that one day, I'm not sure if I'm the person for it or not, but I really want to expose, like I said, and and drive people to the polls when it's local time. And well, two years and here's now. the thing, though, what you're just saying about, you know, you know, if, if you have a local candidate, you know, or, you know, wanting to pass a bill or what have you, you know, look at 30 years down or 30 years ago, you know, you had local newspapers, you had you know, local reporters that were reporting on that. And now we've lost a lot of our small newspapers. We've lost a lot of our small time, you know, mom and pop radio stations. And so it's probably even more important now to find information and to be educated at the local level because you're like you were just saying, you're not going to simply find it. It's not going to be on yeah. your nine o'clock, ten o'clock, eleven o'clock no, news. You need to do the research. And the great thing about technology is, I'm I'm sure you can Google it and correct or or, or find it somehow. Somewhere. It's out there. Yeah. You have to sort it out. You have to definitely research some elbow grease and look it out for there. But the biggest thing too, a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't know until they see campaigning happening. And then you're like, well, mm-hmm. who's Sandra Evans? And you're just, oh, you're seeing is Sandra Evans signs. If that's a real person, I don't know who that person is. But you're like, you know, <laughs> and then you're like, well, who, who, what are they running for? Oh, they're running for sheriff. Oh, shit. I, I know I can vote for my sheriff. Yes, you can. Yeah. Also, judges. You can vote judges as mm-hmm. well. And you want to look at based on what your beliefs are. So if you believe in decriminalizing weed, this justice person doesn't believe that. They're going to just put people in jail and waste your tax dollars just for having some weed on them. I don't want that. I want someone who's going to give someone maybe a quick little fine, go to a rehab center, but then I can put them in jail and waste my tax dollars and that shit. You know, no, so you just, just legalize it. Just legalize it. I, I agree with you. Georgia's going to be the last state that happens in, brother. So, but that's, that's what you have to look at. And that's what people have to understand how these local things affect you. You know, Mm -hmm. and it might not affect you directly right now, but it will sooner or later when you bump into something you don't like. I will tell you, when I first moved to Colorado in 97, I think it was the following year, 98, was uh, an election. There was elections going on. There's always elections going on. Anyway, that was, I believe that was the first year they had legalized marijuana on the ballot and i'm like i'm voting yes for this 
because I'm like, there's no way this is going to pass. And it didn't the first time. But, you know, weed is one of those things that you look at and everybody thinks, oh, it's a gateway drug and all this. But if you really look at it and do your research and you find out it's not, I mean, it has so many medical um, possibilities and benefits. And, you know, it's one of those things that I had a conversation with my son probably a year, two years ago. And he was saying, well, why can't you smoke marijuana when you drive? It's legal. I said, well, there's a difference between federal and state. And Even also- a federal highway, which most highways are federal. Right. And you don't, and I mean, he's, he, he'll be 18 in this coming March. But I said, can you drink alcohol and drive? He goes, no. I go, it's the same thing. You can't be- I am driving, but you can't, you can't, it, you can't be impaired of any kind. Back, I think you are right now. Um, <laughs> but it goes back to that's at that's essentially at the local level and educating yourself because you want to be not only an informed voter, but if you're a parent, you want to be articulate enough to your kids to explain why you know this law is this way or this law is that way not just going oh a bunch of hippies smoking weed <laughs> get, or get uh, because day. i said so exactly yeah. or because right and absolutely no i think that's you're absolutely right I, and we're getting down to the point is making awareness happen at a very young age that's different from what my parents got. My, mother, my parents were not political by any means. I've got to say, I don't believe my mother ever voted in her life. I don't believe my father did either, but he was with the army of the military. Um, but I don't think he ever voted either. Um, and, you know, we lived in a ghetto. We did not have a lot to offer. But um, they did what they had to do as Americans. But and the ghetto is hard. The most people in the ghetto don't vote. Right. You know, they're so worried about trying to survive. The last thing they're saying they're thinking of is, I don't got time for that. I got time to vote for some shit that's not gonna change my life right now. Or or they don't believe that their vote counts. Correct. And essentially to your point with electoral college, if you vote for the wrong candidate, it doesn't it doesn't count. <laughs> right. Oh, it only counts if you vote for the right candidate. Right. So if your if your candidate wins, that's because your mm-hmm. vote made them win. Yeah. You know, and then that's when the electoral college yeah. will go that way. You know, so you know we have as a country, I guess you know, and, and and I'm not really worried about how the world looks at us or perceives us, to be honest with you. And and not that I'm ignoring that fact, but the fact that I'm more worried about the people here to understand it for themselves. Not to be embarrassed, still be patriotic and love your country. We understand that right now, that we're going through some shit. And when you're going through some shit, you just don't run away from it. You have to face it. And that's what we're going through right now as a country. We're going through some shit. And if you are truly really American, and if you're saying, hey, I'm going to get the fuck out of here and move, that's not a patriotic move to me. That means you're only here for when things are good. You can't go anywhere right now. No, you can't go anywhere, anywhere right? Take so, Americans. Right. So, and that's my thing. Like, you know, even when four years ago, people said, I'm going to Canada, I'm going whatever. They didn't fucking leave because your situation is no. good here. America is still one of the best places on earth to live. You can have any opportunity you want. Do we, are we struggling in some areas? Absolutely. Can we get better? Absolutely. We are not fucking perfect. You know, we do have our racial issues. That's, that's obvious. And it's been there for a very long time. Do we make progression every decade for the better? I believe we do. You know, do I, do I like to see faster progression? Absolutely. But that takes time. I think every generation, it gets diluted. 
which is a good thing. Every that every gener- younger generation comes up, they're more accepting of the other cultures coming in or any other culture that's here already compared to our parents or compared to our parents' parents from the past. Well, I, 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 I'm going to just say I am very fortunate and very blessed to have been raised by uh, my parents because I, I really firmly believe they taught me well they taught me about um without without it's you know it's it's one of those things without really teaching me but showing me that i i mean i remember growing up in chicago and meeting you know at the time when my mom was going she was a single mom going to college and meeting all these other people and then moving to the burbs and hanging out with my grandparents and my aunt and uncles and meeting their friends of you know different races and ethnicity and I'm just like I love it I love learning from people and I think you know one of the things why you and I get along so well is we're always questioning things we love asking questions we love talking to people and hearing their story and finding out what makes them tick and i will say i am the opposite of you in this situation that i am concerned how other countries look at us because we are right now as a country we are a, very much a laughing stock to all the other countries because we can't get our shit together you know again it's from the top down but but again this is go back to you know being a parent and if you can have an open mind as a parent and be able to say to your kids right versus wrong i had a conversation actually with both both my son and uh daughter the younger daughter who's older than my son anyway We'll save that for another show. And I said to them something about, well, you know, I don't care if either of you are gay. I don't care. I really don't. And I'm sure one day you'll meet gay people. And they both looked at me and go, we already know kids in our own school that are gay. I'm like, and how do you treat them? We don't care either. I'm like, hallelujah. You know, I I was uh, a, a friend of mine. She just did a, uh, a, a TED talk and it was about um, she's black and, and the things that she's gone through living in France and how much, and I didn't realize this, I thought, I'm sorry, but I thought America was the only fucked up country right now when it came to Mm-mm. racist assholes. And so she was, that was her talk about racism. And so the comment I put in there was, I love taking our dog to the dog park because to me, the dog park shows there is good in the world. You have dogs that are different color, different size, different breeds. They get along. Why can't we? Why can't we be more like dogs? I think because we've, we've been taught not to appreciate difference. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's been, that's been transitioned down from our parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, whatever. And like I said, I think the new generation is different. Like you just described about your children, and my kids do the same as well. They don't. They see their friends. They have all types of friends, and they're all types of whatever. And they don't look at them as that. They look at they look at Billy and Sarah just as Billy and Sarah, who just so happen to be X Y Z. But the X Y Z is not the prominent piece about Billy or Sarah. That's right. Not who they, that's not who they are. That's maybe what they are, but it's not who they are. Growing up, I have to say that I wasn't taught that. Or growing up in a hood in Brooklyn, you know, 
anything you can expose on someone to show weakness in that person, that's what you did to survive. You know, and I think that goes for corporate America as well. Corporate America did the same fucking shit. Oh, hell yeah. Right? So with the new generation and how they're demanding different work laws or different work environments to how they're forcing the narrative on social media. I don't believe in the council culture thing. If you did something seven, 10 years ago, and now you're trying to bring it up for me, I've grown since then. Plus times were different a decade ago where I could have said that and everyone got the fucking joke or whatever it was. Right. Um, so I don't believe in the council culture because it honestly doesn't take care of anything. Um, but the generation now has shown, hey guys, like we got to show you baby boomers you know, how to act. And that's who we have running the country right now. We have these old white men running the country that have no connection truly to their constituents whatsoever. And as much as they say, and that goes for both sides, to be honest with you. You know, I don't think Nancy Pelosi has a clue who the hell she's really representing as far as her constituents in California. You know what I'm saying? And she said that in a, in a video, and I'm like, no, you're out of touch too. You're so far up the pole you don't have a pulse of what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that goes for everybody who gets to a certain, that goes and even in, in, in business. You become a CEO, you don't have the pulse of your company really anymore. You have to be told what the pulse is. Right. You know, the, the information travels up to you. And then once, once your problem goes, comes to you, you got to figure shit out. But don't make believe that you're there in the trenches with people and you're holding people's hands online for some fucking government cheese because you're not doing that. Let's be real here. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I do like tenureship, but I don't like lifetime. You know what I'm saying? So if, if, if you're, in, you're in politics for a lifetime and you haven't learned to change, I don't want you. I don't want you there. Okay. So do you feel that there's the uh, uh, judges on the Supreme Court should have, have, a, have a age? Term? Either age or some type of term. There should be an age limit or a term. Let's say at 70, you have to be gone. Time for you to retire. And let's get somebody else in. Or a term limit, maybe six years. Unlike how everything's four to two years, other countries have prime ministerships for six years. Right? So maybe we do that for six, eight years. Don't know. But lifetime appointment? Lifetime appointment. That's fucking huge. And don't get me wrong. I think people evolve. People do change. You know, um, I have no problem with the person they put. Um, what's her name? Barrett, I believe her name is. Her last name is Barrett. Yes. The new justice. You know why? Because they have shown in the past, whether you're Democrat or Republican, they have held up that chair. And it's whatever has come to them, I think they've made pretty much great decisions for us. You know, are they trying to pack it? Sure they are. They'll, they'll be stupid not to. The Democrats have done the same exact thing. And if you're trying to hold people accountable for what they said four years ago, oh, we won't do it if it happens to us, to you. Come on. The law says they can do it. Why yeah. not exacerbate the law and get it done and say, you guys should have got elected. You did the same damn thing. So don't blame the Republicans for speeding it through. It came about just to happen. RBG freaking passed away, unfortunately, and they got the opportunity to get somebody in there. They did it. Um, but again, you'd be surprised how these judges actually vote a lot of the times. Um, and that, that has been seen where, you know, the particular party thinks they have what they need in, the, in the, that process and actually don't. Um, Because they actually uphold the law, and that's what I'm looking for. But that person shows us good stewardship in the law. Like she's a Catholic, you know, so I had to worry about is she going to put her her religious beliefs into the law? I want I want a separation of church and state. I don't want you, you know, influencing your religion and then one particular religion over the nation with a particular law. I want you to just look at the law, look at the situation, and make the best judgment possible. I hope I hope that she can be biased. I hope she can be. That's all we can do is hope. Yeah. Listen, listen, listen to the arguments, and have a fair assessment of it. And I go back to 
I, when, when Trump first got in office and I had this discussion with my son and later on I saw a similar um, message from Dave Chappelle and that was, all right, he's in office, let's give him a chance, okay? Yeah. He's a president, he's our president, except hashtag not my president. Um, that's who won give them a chance and it didn't take long for the country to go what the fuck just happened but but, but you have look to at us give right? her we tried we try new shit all the time yeah that was us trying some shit and it really didn't work out yeah it was it was new coke it was new coke going uh we, we don't need new coke no 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 I think what we have to get away from is popularity. And that's how we really vote anyway. We, we vote about, we vote on popularity, not fucking politics, honestly. That's why these ads aren't about politics. It's about bashing and making another person look good. You know, so if I'm more popular than you and I, I could get more ads than you, hey, I'm, I'm going to probably most likely won't come and influence you, you know? Um, and it's just about that influence. It has, that's what I'm saying. I wish, you know, the people would demand more information from the candidates and don't have this. Like, like Pence is, is the greatest to me politician ever on how he never answers a fucking question. You know, you, you ask him a direct question, he'll come up with some other shit. And like, who are you talking? You must have a conversation with somebody else. But that's what politicians do, especially seasoned politicians. They tend to know how to not answer questions. Yeah. And when you see that consistently, then that's when you have to take your voting right that you have and go to the polls and vote. And, though, and sometimes, and sometimes, many times, your vote may not count that particular time. I won't say it won't count. Your particular person you're voting for may not win. And that, that's part of it. That is part of voting. You know, but again, I think, you know, we have to continue doing the vote, continue showing the next generation about it, continuing to, when it's time to vote locally, be as big and present then as we are now. I'm going to tell you, Johnny, I'm going to take this conversation back home and I'm going to bring up the, the your your point about being educated at the local level is more important than at the national level. And I'm going to have those conversations with my kids and say, understand Listen. that politics isn't pretty, but it is a privilege and your right to vote Make sure you're you are doing your homework. Make sure you are looking at, you know, both sides, and and understand both points of view. And again, just be got to be educated. I always even put it down to more simpler terms. Do you love where you live at? Do you love your state? Mm -hmm. You love these parks we go to. You love the mountains. You like you love the fucking snow, don't you? No. I hate no. the fucking snow. Exactly. We love the weed, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been too What long. can you do to keep it that way? Vote for people locally that have the same interests as you, to have just as much love as you have for your, your state. Mm -hmm. and that's what you that's have to do. Point. You know, I moved from New York to Atlanta, and you know, I haven't been in New York in, in 20 years. Like, you know, of course, I've been there to visit, but I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a citizen of New York no more. You know, do I have dual citizenship? I do. <laughs> you know, I'm a citizen of Georgia, and I love I love Georgia. I have to say, I really do. It's a, it's a it's a great state. I, I love the state. Um, it's taught me a lot about politics. Actually, it's a Republican state. Um, is different than some other states. It's not perfect by any means, but I will represent them. If I didn't feel I could represent the state, then I would leave the state and I would go someplace else. Um, but I do like it. 
I, I, I know. And I, I think this will be my, my, my rooted area where I may retire from. Don't know yet officially, but yeah, that, that looks that way. And Lovely loves it too. Like she, we really do love outside of the politics, you know, we really do love where we live and we love our, we love our neighbors. And that's what it comes down to. Like, you know, I know people just want, don't want to be bothered. People just want to live their lives. But I think in order to live the life you live, not that I think, but in order to live the life you live, to be as comfortable as we are as Americans, voting is what got us there. And if we don't take that in, in, into consideration, if we take the vote for granted and don't vote, and they'll educate ourselves again, then that's when your comfortability will be disturbed. And when there's disruption, you're not gonna know how to act. You're not gonna know what the fuck to do. And you're not gonna understand how it got to, the, to this point when you could have probably stopped it years behind just by a simple clicking of, now that was a click of a button on the screen, right? Click, click of the screen, you know, to, to, to cast your vote, you know? So it's, it's things like that I think we have to really look at. You know, again, priming our children, our young adults, having honest, candid conversations, uncomfortable conversations. And I'm to the point now of having honestly just uncomfortable conversations with anybody. That's, that's what we really need to do. We can't just have, I can't have you as a friend if we just always fucking agree. Well, I, I agree, agree with you. I mean, I yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, if we always agree on everything, I, I, you know, I don't want to be around a bunch of people that just have the same thoughts as I do. I'll just replicate myself if that's the case. You know, I want, I want different thought patterns. I want someone to take me to a direction I didn't think of. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I want someone to introduce me to something new or something higher, or you know, just give me a, a different interest that I wasn't aware of. Mm-hmm. You know. I want all that. And who, what gives me that is talking to my peers, to my friends, mm-hmm. you know, um, challenging myself as a person and accepting that I may hear something that may offend me, challenge me and push a button, but it's not out of malice. It's not out of trying to hurt me, but it's because of how that person may have grown up and their perception of, of America and life. Because my perception of how I grew up not, not my perception of how I grew up, but how I grew up has definitely influenced my perception of America compared to how you grew up in your perception of America. Totally fucking different. And how we've come together, it's gonna be, I think we're going to celebrate our third year anniversary. Is that right? Something like that. Coming up. And how we came about, you know what I'm saying? And how we became good friends now, it's insane. Right? It's not, it's not normal. It's almost like an arranged marriage. So <laughs> that worked out, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, but it comes down to that, right? It comes down to it comes down to honestly, like no, surrounding yourself with people who actually are smarter than you, know more than you, and that's why I have you as a friend. You're definitely smarter than me. Uh, you know? I'm not smarter than you. I just like to read. You're not, you're not prettier than me, but you are smarter than me. No, I don't have I don't have a little manscaping thing you know so no, I, like I, this I, beard I mean, how it looks looks wolfman wolfman jackish i doesn't it i swear yeah. to god man it does i was gonna shave it lovely told me hey no shave november next month she's like you can't shave it yet so oh, that's um, right yeah so I'm, gonna, uh, I'm really gonna bad. probably wait to the springtime i'm gonna let this bad boy continue to grow and then i'll wait to the springtime are you gonna do it like zz top style I don't think that long. I think this is actually a pretty decent length I have now. Yeah. You know, if it fits my my character, my build, my uh, too long, I think that would, mm. it's bad enough it, when I'm eating right now. It's just everything's in here. I pulled out a ham sandwich last, last week from it. It was weird. So here, here's, here, you know, part of your topic of, of voting. You know, you can have people vote in. Yeah. Uh, about the beard. And I'm going to do that, actually. I'm going to probably do that on IG. Um, not to be clean-shaven. Let's get this straight, people, because if I'm clean-shaven, it's not a good look. I just do not. I'm one of those people as a man that, that I do not look good clean-shaven at all. 
And like, I need hair on my face to make me look the way I look. Um, I've done it by mistake a couple of times where I should have my mustache off. And then I had to shave everything off. Shave everything off, yeah. And lovely is like, who the hell are you? Don't come to me for another week or two until that shit grows back. <laughs> That's how bad I look. I'm the opposite in our household because I, I, in the past I've grown, I've gone, I went through a goatee stage at one point with, with my wife and she's like, mm, no. I said, all right, I'm okay with that. Yeah. So, you know, so right now it's, it's a little much, but eh, it's good right now. Mm-hmm. You know, but I'm glad we always just speak about this time because, you know, like I said, the voting piece was huge for me. I know it's huge for you. I know, you know, I know your beliefs are very strong on on who our president, who our leaders are. You know, um, so let me ask you this, Dan. Obviously, we probably know, you know who you're voting for. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you, you vote, have you voted already? You voted already, haven't mm-hmm. you? Yeah. So you, you voted for Biden and Kamala, right? Not Kanye. Mm-hmm. Um, no, not uh, Kanye. Not Kanye. Okay. Well, I, I wrote Kanye. But, but, but hold on. Hold on. There was, on, on our ballots, there was one running for president. I had a liberal group at like another. I'm not sure who it was. I ain't, I ain't try to save the name. There was another person, persons running. I don't know who the hell they were. Yeah. I'm not sure how they made it on the ballot. But yeah, it had a goofy ass name. I'm going, are you fucking kidding me? Come on. Yeah. I mean, the, see, the, and this is my thing. Not every state allows everyone to get on the ballot. No. So again, but then right there, all right, so I'm give it to my question for yes. you and tell me what you think. How do you feel about this two-party system that we have? Well, I, it really isn't a two-party system. We have in, independents. We have libertarians. You've got different parties. I would say more of associations because right now we only have two parties. You get a Democrat and see, Republicans, right? And you and and it's like Bloods and Crips. You have the 69th Street Bloods, even though they're 69th Street, but they're still a 69th Street Bloods. You know what I'm saying? So, no, because I'm 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 a stupid white guy. I don't. <laughs> I don't so pretty I'm, much, it's like it's like having a chapter. You saying that? Let's say like this, like Bernie. Bernie is socialist, but he's under the Democratic umbrella. You yeah. know, the Democrats have got to say are pretty freaking smart compared to the Republicans where if there's another developing kind of party, they say, you know what, come with us because they don't want to lose votes. Come with us. We'll let you be a little socialistic person that you want to be. But um, let's do it under the Democratic umbrella so we can get all the votes. We yeah, have- but, then, but we had the Tea Party. And the Republicans killed them at the kneecaps and slashed them and said, get the fuck out of here. We don't need to separate the vote. And the Republicans the opposite. Instead of saying, come on, our umbrella, they chopped them off at the kneecap saying, let's just, uh, uh-uh, stop, fuck that shit. And they killed them off. I don't think, uh, I want to say it's more of a, a three-party, Republican, Democrat, Independent. I, I, I still feel, because when, when Bernie ran, he should have ran. He should have ran Independent. He, he should have, he's more of an Independent yeah. with his thought process than a, a, a true democrat so correct i but he I needed the backing see, he needed the money he did he so i love I, bernie i i would have voted for bernie a lot of people uh, would have but again yeah. he chose to run as a democrat yeah because he needed the money and that's my point we have a two-party system we have associations i don't think we have a third party but the, but i look at it you know, I'll, I'll I'll wave my flag right now, and and I think no, don't wave your flag, big... please. I want because you waving your flag is I don't want you waving your flag. I want you to stand for this so people can understand exactly what where, where, where you're where you stand at. What you understand? No, I'm I'm saying that's the that's the beauty of our country is that we can, you know, when people say, oh, you can grow up and be president. Well, we we've somewhat proved that if you have the money, but. I think that, yes, to your point, yeah, the, there really is just a 
two-party system. However, the caveat is you could run as a libertarian, you could run on the green ticket, you can you have those opportunities. And I, I want to I want to say that we have more than one party, but it's more prevalent that we have a two-party system. Yeah, because you know our forefathers want us to have a multi-party system, not just mm-hmm. two. And the Democrats and Republicans are in unison of killing anything else off because they do not want to split the vote. Correct. Plain and simple. And that's from both parties. You know what I'm saying? So they both are shady ass motherfuckers that don't want to split the vote at all. And so that's why they they they, they kill off anyone who's coming up an uprising because they don't want that to change. You know, they don't want to lose, you know, seats in the Senate at all. You know. So do I see a third party coming? I do know AOC gets a lot of buzz. Her mm-hmm. and her, her group. Um, I think it's Ilion Omar, the other Democrat from Michigan as well. I forget her name. Um, and she knows, and they always, they always say what, you know, they don't speak for the, our, the rest of the Democrats, but they're young, mm-hmm. they're young women, they're young women of color. And they have different views. They have different ways of doing things. Doesn't make it right or wrong, but they're definitely challenging the status quo. And Nancy Pelosi don't like that shit. She 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 kind of quieted them down a little bit, and she was like, "I'm I'm I'm still the head, you know, person in charge here of the Democratic Party. So calm yourselves down, you know." And that's sad because, you know, for for example, AOC. That's politics. She, you're right. She is not just an up and comer. She is articulate. Mm -hmm. She is super smart. And she's Puerto Rican. She gets it. She understands. I don't know where to go with Puerto Rican other than, yeah, you're right. Um, (laughs) And, you know, she understands, she understands, you know, for example, social media. That she she does. She was on Twitch, what, a couple weeks ago? Yeah. And and was killing it on Twitch. Yeah. And I think that's where Nancy Pelosi is going. Does it, what the hell is a Twitch? Exactly. She thought she had she Other thought she had this. a pre-existing condition. Exactly. That's what happened. Oh she thought God. she had AOC's a Twitch. on Twitch. Yeah. She's twitching like this. Yeah. But no, like, and that's my point, right? So she just went onto Twitch, which is a totally different demographic than any of these older politicians are aware yeah. of. And she just got more ammunition for herself. Yeah. You know, so when when you see someone with the force, you either have to take it and, and nurture it, or if you try to ignore it, you, you it's going to hit you back in the head like a boomerang. But this is why your point earlier was so important. Local. And she's Who local as you can local? get. Exactly. She's as local as you can get. Exactly, and 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 that's exactly how she was a, a bartender, and she ran for something from someone that was in her position that did not even live in New York. I think he lived in Kansas, but he was in charge of that district in New York and Queens, in Brook, the Bronx and Queens of that district. And I'm like, that makes no damn sense. And it was allowed for I think over 14 years. Not allowed, but he kept on winning because. One, not too many people are still running, right? Was running against him. Or if they did, they got, you know, squandered by him. And But she ran and she had the community going. And he wasn't even showing up to the debatable events. She was by herself and he sent someone else to debate for him. That went to show you how well he, he's disconnected from the community. And she's shown that she's gone into DC and Mero doing, you know, uh, 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 on there a couple of times to talk to them. She's gone to different podcasts. Like she, she's done Jimmy Fallon a few times. You know, she goes into these shows that these younger generation, generation people connect to. She seems normal as hell. Mm-hmm. And when she's questioning these large, you know, these large corporations, you know, in these meetings, mm-hmm. she a lot of times has them in the corner. You know, C-SPAN is boring, but sometimes you have to watch the clips, <laughs> you know, uh-huh. 
and, and, and inform yourself on it. And you know, I, that might be a fan of AOC, but I'm just, I'm just saying what I see. You know, you can't, you can't ignore certain things or certain people. And, and that's what you have with her and, and those other uh, women who are representing, you know, their states. And it's a new movement. As far as what direction, you know, that's going to be up for them to decide to break off from the Democratic Party. And that's what I think is going to happen. I think they will break off. And because they have so much momentum with them, that that's what they need to, to break off with to get monies behind them. Because if, if they don't, if they do it without the monies, then they just be back as a, as a Democratic uh, umbrella. But if, if they really break off and become whatever they want to call themselves, you know, they kind of are on the socialistic side with Bernie. They're kind of like the new improved Bernie, you know. Um, they have a lot of Bernie-ish views, and they go a little further past that. Um, that may or may not work. Don't know. But people do want to change. I know that for sure. Yeah, and, you know, I, I go back to 2016, and that is why our country wanted a change. Well, part of the reason why Hillary didn't win is because the American people were already tired of the Clintons. They didn't trust Hillary. Uh, Comey, Comey announced the email like 10 days before the election. People were embracing Trump because he didn't come from government. He was, you know... Right. This exactly. so-called billionaire. Yeah. Yeah. And so when it came down to, you know, the next day, finding out Trump won, I I'm sure Hillary's like, what the fuck happened? Well, the American people wanted a change. And the, the great thing about these past four years is we want to change again. And with with you know example like AOC she's creating that change her and her friends within you know government are doing powerful things and making great changes you know even if you don't like her views you're still talking about her even when trump can't pronounce her name he's talking about her and that's a good thing because as we progress year after year, people like her are going to start standing out even more and more. And we're going to have more people following in her footsteps and that group of ladies as well, where there, there could be some monumental changes going forward. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. You know, I think um, I think we will see those changes in our lifetime, mm -hmm. as as we are in a new in industrial revolution, but in the tech world, you know things. You know, this I think, just like what happened in what nineteen nineteen flu, nineteen twenty flu, uh, nineteen eighteen, nineteen nineteen, eighteen eighteen nineteen eighteen flu to what happening now with this COVID in nineteen twenty twenty twenty, um, it's speeding up how we do things with tech, right? Mm -hmm. You know, using Zoom. You and I have been using Zoom or Skype for forever. But yeah. the rest of the world has like, wow, leaps and bounds. What is, what is this new Zoom thing? <laughs> exactly. And it's forcing technology at cameras. You know, cameras have always been a big issue. They're just, they've always just been good enough. But now they're forcing, you know, as a matter of fact, we got to get better with these cameras because people want to be seen, you know, differently. Like means having a background to doing this, like there's certain now things that we want a part of to be a part of our accessory, I guess you know, a cart that we need to operate now. You know, working from home, not a new concept, but I think it's been more while. Like, okay, I can still run my company and everything's more productive. Oh shit, why the fuck not? And I don't have to worry about commercial space or not as big of a commercial space instead of renting out five floors in skyscraper. I could probably get something in a strip mall. Okay, cool. Let's look at that, right? So, but again, it comes down to having options, right? 
it comes down to having those options and, and weighing those options out. And that comes down to having a choice. Like this right now, we are moving ahead very, very fast. The electric cars are here. I've been waiting for that all my life, going to concept car shows all my life. And you always see the concept stuff and they never come out. And like, damn it. Right. And now you're like, man, like this is where I was a kid. This is what they were showing. And it's here. And it's, I can get it if I want to. It's, it's right now. You know, we're going to put people on Mars. That's going to happen in a few more years. Mm-hmm. That's going to be insane when that happens. That's our landing on the moon, but bigger. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, people, like, you know, voting is huge. We're going to propel us into the next century. Right. Knowing your value and worth right now in this pandemic. And if you haven't taken advantage of what has happened in this pandemic, then you're looking at it all wrong. Right. If this didn't propel you to make you grind or hustle harder or to find a product that you want to sell or become an entrepreneur or become that writer you ever wanted to be, then you really missed the opportunity of your life. Like, yes, these are hard times. I'm a part of those hard times. You know, you are, everyone is. No one has not come out of this without a struggle. Somehow, some, someone's always been affected. I lost my uncle last month to COVID. You know, we had to have a Zoom funeral. You know, he was 82 years old. And um, it was a week, a year and a week anniversary of when his wife, my aunt, passed away last year. So it was insane how within a year's time, we lost both of them. And to have that, and I had to rethink myself, what do I have? I have this podcast, I have my voice, I have my YouTube channel. You know, I, had, I, I, didn't, I wasn't as creative as I wanted to be. But I had to figure out how do I get back into that routine and channel myself to be even better and more articulate in my view and my content. And it's working out. I'm getting more strides than I was before, just by switching up a couple of things about myself. So with all that being said, it's again, involvement, involvement in yourself, development, and time that you have to take out. The more time you take out for yourself, it will probably take away from your family a little, slightly. No, it will. Not even slightly. It will take some time away from your family. But you will get that back because it's, it's for your family. And it's really about what legacy you want to leave behind for your family. And today, right now, if you can say you can, you, you can leave a, a nice legacy for your family, wow, amazing. Let's make it longer and bigger. If you can say right now you can't leave a legacy for your family, but just maybe some debt, then we need to fix that. And you can't look for leadership from politicians to, to, to hear that from. You have to hear that from within. So if you're looking for a president to be your leader, you're looking in the wrong fucking place. You have to look from within. You have to build that from your, within yourself. You have to run your farm, your, your homestead. That You're the freaking leader of that. And you have to go ahead and show your family that, which you have. And again, not everyone's made to be an entrepreneur. I get that. Not everyone's made to do videos or podcasts like we do, you know. Um, but whatever you are good at, I hope you really invest in yourself and make it 10 times more valuable for you to move ahead with your life. And voting is part of that, right? Because if, if, you don't vote in this country one who's going in a separate, different direction. You start losing opportunities because of different laws being passed. Now you're going to say, well, I wish I voted. No, it's too late now. Now you have to reconsider, do I leave this country? And I don't think we're ever going to, I don't think we're there yet. I think we have a lot of, I have a lot of hope for this country. I have a, I have a lot of love for this country. Uh, you know, I think that the people at the core, no matter what side you're on, are very patriotic. And we all want the same thing. We just want, we want love. We want happiness. We want, we want some money in our pockets. We just want to take care of our damn family. 
just a basic necessity shit, right? That's what we really fucking want. Yes, we have our differences. Yes, we believe in different things and how we may want to run the country compared from the middle on out to the coastals, to coastal regions. But at the core, it's the same. But look at it. We have 50 different oppor- different choices we can go to if you want to live that certain way. Mm-hmm. Right? If you want to live in a strict place, you can go somewhere in, in the Midwest where the law is a little more stricter. Right? If you want to live in the Bible Belt, you can. That's why it's called the Bible Belt. If you want to be carefree, you got California. They're going to tax the fuck out of you, but that's, <laughs> you'll be carefree. Right? You get the sunshine all the time. They'll burn in your eyes from the forest burning, but you know, you'd be great. You have so many fucking choices you have. You have 50 of them. All great choices, depending on what you're looking for. So if you can't find it here, then you're not going to find it elsewhere. You know, and a lot of, a lot of people outside the country, a lot of you know, Europeans say, oh, well, you guys don't travel as much. This country is so vast. We have so many different, you know, climate temperatures that we don't need to. We don't need to go to the south of France. I can go to Florida. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I get the 80 degree weather. You know, yeah, but I, I would weather. love, I would love to go to France just to. Well, no, of course. Some wine. But if if I'm in in Germany, you know, I'm stuck. I'm German. I gotta go to France for that. Here, right. no, we have that in our country. You know, we can go to Hawaii. You know, we can go, we have so many, we we'll go to skiing, let's go to Colorado, let's go to Utah. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, if you want to see a great national park, you know, go to Telluride, go to Mount Zion, you know, it's, it's there, it's beautiful scenery. You know, we have these great national parks. And that's why we don't travel as much, because we have this shit locally. You know, we have a lifetime of shit here we can see, but of course, you know, get your passport, get your stamps going too. Mm-hmm. But man, I got to say, like, you know, I do, I do hope, I'm very optimistic how this country is going to go and go. I see how people are bucking the system on also the Republican side, not agreeing with the current administration. You know, um, some Republicans have been very vocal about who they're voting for. Cindy McCain came out um, and said who she was, you know, she running for Biden. So did um, Colin Powell said he was voting for Biden as well. He's, you know, a great general plus, you know, former Secretary of State for you know for George Bush. Um, so you're seeing Republicans buck the system. You know, of course, would it be enough? No one knows until after I say November third, because we're not going to have a, a win on November third with, with the with the mail-in ballots. But I'm sorry, I'm more on this tangent. But I just want people to have hope and not automatically give up no matter who wins. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't mean that you're not going to get what you want, right? Again, if you focus locally, if you're not getting what you need right now, that's that's a local issue. It's not a national issue. And that's what people have to really look at. Yes, vote for your president. But man, you better vote more for your fucking governor. That's what's going to affect you right fucking now. That's what's going to, you know, have the, the more impactful laws on you right now locally. And that's what we have to look at. Because honestly, if we look at the federal government, they're, they're made not to really fuck with the states. We give them money to protect us with the, for the military. So we say, here you go, federal government, protect us. So Alabama won't invade, you know, Georgia, Utah won't invade Colorado, right? right? And you know, we go from there with it, and then we share the Army Corps of Engineers, right? So, like, for us in Georgia, we have this Chattahoochee River that actually feeds into Florida. Florida is always suing us, saying that we don't get enough water. Well, guess what? The Army Army Corps of Engineers you know, runs that shit. We don't. So, whenever they want to release the dam, it's up to them, not to us, right? Again, like, people need to understand and know that, that 50 states is a fancy word for a country, there's 50 countries that decide to say, hey, let's become one nation. And we don't want the federal government fucking with us when they come up with our own state laws. That's when you go to every state, there's different freaking laws. Like I said, I'm sorry I'm going on a tangent, but people need to hear this. If you're not aware of this, shame on you. Shame on you. 
you know, if you miss civics class because you were, you know, skipping like I was, shame on you. <laughs> you know, am, am I going too crazy too far, Tommy? Let me know. You chime in. So I learned a valuable lesson many, many years ago, and that is how stupid our liquor laws are. Yes. Because I wanted to send um, my wife's parents and my parents gift baskets and part of the gift baskets were wine. I couldn't send the basket to uh, my in-laws in New York because of their local liquor laws in their county and all that. So I feel that it's it's again i know we've we've talked about this but my gosh not only vote but be an educated voter yeah just be an educated voter so that's it for me that's all i got yeah tommy i want to say thank you so much brother i want to thank you brother oh my gosh anytime anytime and i hope i hope You, the viewers, the listeners, enjoyed this because I'll cry if you don't. (laughs) Like I said, I think this is this is not a thing. Like I said, this is huge. If you haven't voted, go out and vote. I encourage you do it now. Do it early. If you wait to the day of November third, the lines may be packed because like because at Christmas time, people like to wait for the last minute to go shopping. Yeah. So don't wait to the last minute. Go out and vote. I'm sure that, that the, the lines are a lot shorter now. I believe this is your last week to go vote early um, before next week, which will be the thirds, and then that's it. So um, go out and vote. Um, get interested. Do something. Volunteer locally. Inform, inform, inform yourself. Then from there, inform your family and your friends. Until then, Tommy, thanks again, brother. And uh, we're out.